The number one reason Canadians bought real estate over the past few years was because they feared missing out with prices rising too fast. My brokerage, Zolo Realty, and Alyssa Davies from Mixed Up Money put together an incredible article regarding buyer sentiment in the Canadian real estate market over the past few years. And the results were pretty interesting. The online study was conducted between August 24th of 2023 and September 1st of 2023. And the survey asked 800 respondents various opinion and self-reports to measure their home buying experience and their home buyer sentiment between 2020 and 2023. And the respondents shared their feelings about the current economy and real estate market. And we're going to take a look at those details today. My name is McCallum and I'm a team leader and real estate agent in the city of Toronto specializing in residential resale. And if you'd like to book a one-on-one -on -one call with me to chat about buying, selling, or renting, you can go to the first link in the description of this video where you'll be brought to a scheduling platform where you can select a time that works best for you. And please don't forget that if you enjoy this content or you learn anything at all, hit both the like and subscribe buttons. The study found that 93% of people say a competitive real estate market and rising interest rates had at least some influence on their decision to buy a home, which makes sense when you think about it. When assets are rising in price and we see people making a ton of money through purchasing that asset, no one wants to be left behind. And in the same realm of FOMO or fear of missing out, the study found that 43% of respondents purchased a home because prices were rising and they wanted to buy before it became more unaffordable for them. Now that doesn't come as too much of a surprise to me, honestly. I think there's been studies in the past couple of years that determined around 70% of Canadians want to own real estate. So if 70% of Canadians want to own real estate, then a big reason for them purchasing would be because prices are rising beyond what they can afford. The second and third most common influences on purchasing real estate were needing more space and tired of renting, which again are not surprising to me because when we conduct our buyer consultations, those tend to be the most common answers when we ask why our potential client wants to purchase a home. But 34% said that a real estate professional indicated it was a good time to buy, which influenced their decision. Is actually pretty interesting to me because it's not always the best time for everybody to purchase real estate. The sixth most common reason was buyers feeling that it was a good investment opportunity at 28% is actually a really interesting number. And it's kind of surprising to me because I would have thought that number would have been higher given how the past few decades of real estate growth has played out. But I actually like that the percentage of buyers purchasing because of investment opportunities is lower on the list. It means fewer people are speculating. Zolo interviewed a woman who purchased a property after being declined multiple times when looking to rent, and she said something that is pretty interesting to me. She said many people cannot afford today's rental prices, and most people cannot afford to buy at today's prices. If someone has the means and the choice between renting and buying, they're picking between two very difficult paths regardless of which one it is. Renting is, for the most part, more affordable, but the prices are still very high and they're escalating across the country. And buying is obviously expensive as well. And Brienne, the woman who was interviewed, chose to purchase a property because she didn't like the idea of possibly being displaced into an unstable rental market. Now, I think this is something that people forget quite a lot. When you rent, you don't have strong housing stability. If you're no longer in a lease term, the landlord can give you 60 days notice and you'll need to leave. They obviously need to give you valid reasons. But some tenants don't leave, and that's a conversation for another video. When a tenant has to leave their rented property, they don't automatically pay the same amount of rent on the next property they lease. They end up back in the rental market pool as a tenant, and they're going to be paying current market rent. Now, not long ago, in 2018, the average rental price for a one-bedroom property in the city of Toronto was just over $2,100. Today, the average rental price for a one-bedroom property in the city of Toronto is $2,568. And that was a mere five years ago. If you go back to 2010, the average rent for a one-bedroom was $1,650. Every time a tenant who has been in their property for a long time and has a lower rental rate 
has to move, they're going to be looking at significantly higher housing costs. And there's nothing they can really do to prevent that. But this next finding from the study is probably the most interesting to me. And it's that 3% of Canadians never worry about their mortgage renewal. Now, for those who are not overly familiar with mortgage renewals, it's the time when your current mortgage term expires and you need to re-up your mortgage at the new current rate. So if you bought a home in 2019 with a five-year fixed rate at 2.5%, then your mortgage would be coming up for renewal next year. And the current rates for a five-year fixed are sitting around 5.5%. If interest rates do in fact stay higher for longer, then many people who purchased real estate with mortgages when rates were low could find themselves in a tough spot, and many may need to sell their homes due to that increase in interest rate. My recommendation if you're someone who has a fixed rate mortgage at a very low rate is to save your cash and even look at a GIC paying a high rate so you can then pay a lump sum at renewal. Now, of course, I'm not a mortgage broker, so seek your broker's advice and guidance. And if you don't have a mortgage broker and you want to get set up on the right track for preparing for renewal, reach out and I'm happy to connect you with a great mortgage broker. Another really important stat revealed from the study is that 45% of Canadians would still be happy in their home even if there was another interest rate increase before the end of the year. And 40% are still very happy with their home purchase today. And I'm one of those people. I bought a home post-pandemic and I love it. I wouldn't trade it. I'm certainly paying more monthly than if I was renting But I want the security of ownership and the eventual benefits that come with holding a tangible asset. The study caps things off by saying that costs are high and there's anxiety about the future. But Canadian homeowners are overwhelmingly happy with their living situation and feel they paid what their home is worth. 